How do you? And welcome. Let's talk about the Pat McGrath Labs and Bridgerton 2 collection. All right, again, welcome. My name's Anna. Thank you for being here. I picked up the Bridgerton 2 collection after being a little bit put off by sort of the way that the first one was launched. Um, a lot of people waited a long time. There wasn't a lot of good communication as far as I understood. And I'll admit I was a little put off by that, but I did like some of the products. And when I first saw this collection, I was kind of like, oh, that looks the same as the first one. But, but, uh, I was, I was lured in yet again. <laughs> Um, I really like a lot of Pat McGrath's products, especially the eyeshadows. Um, and I have liked the blushes and the highlighters. So, so I was sold and I did purchase, um, quite a few things from, from the collection. I got the eyeshadow with the, the eye cool and the like cheek and um one of the highlighters this one is the or the highlighting powders this one is skin scintillating diamond body shimmer was that the name of it i guess so anyways one of the highlighting body powders and okay first off look at how large this is i was not expecting that <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but this is as big as my face. <laughs> I think, I think I thought it would be like split the difference between the two of these, I guess. Anyways, this is huge. And I already kind of have some regrets. I already have some regrets in a way a little bit about this whole thing. I'm just, I'm a little put off by it. And I'll, I'll talk about why it mostly has to do with customer service. I like, well, here, first let me, let me also say, I did pick up three of the lipsticks. I tried to pick three different shades. Um, they all, a lot of them looked a bit similar. Um, and I heard people saying when they would swatch them that they were pretty similar. So I did pick up three that I thought would be somewhat different and I'll swatch all of those today. But basically, um, I don't know, from the very beginning, this just wasn't the best experience for me and it starts with they always launch when it's 6 a.m um my time which you know what that is not that's that's fine that's not like that's a me problem um but because I wasn't sure what was going to be sold together in sets and things like that it took me a, and, and I am not coherent I don't I don't get up until nine o'clock like I I'm just I'm a night owl I'm not an early riser and I'm also totally non-functional for the first, I don't know, hour that I'm awake. I'm just a zombie. And so trying to figure out an order, place an order at six in the morning was very surreal experience for me. Um, again, that is not the brand's fault. I'm not faulting the brand. I'm just kind of giving you my experience. Anyways, I was trying to figure out, I also, there wasn't a price on the lipsticks before launch and so I didn't know how many there were. I just couldn't plan ahead, which is what I need to do if something's gonna launch at 6 a.m. <laughs> Cause I didn't wanna miss out. Anyway, so it took me quite a while to actually like get everything together and place my order. And by then it did look like some of the things, I think it was mostly the, and the eyeshadow palette and the eye coal came in like a set. And so I bought those. This is gonna be, okay. Let me say, this is gonna be a very chatty video. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings that I want to share. <laughs> so um, just a heads up. Also, just in case, I want to give you a warning that there may be some Bridgerton spoiler alert things. I'm not sure what I may or may not say about it, but I'll probably talk about season two just slightly um, in ways in talking about the theme and everything. So. Just beware if you don't want any spoilers, you might you might not want, just, just beware that there may be maybe little spoilers. Okay, um, now that I've gotten that out of the way, um, <clears throat> I'll move on with my, or go on with my story. So 
basically I felt very like insecure ordering and it took me a while and so I think I missed like the initial sort of launch and that's fine that's that's my fault but the eyeshadow palette and eye cool set looked like it was going to ship it said will ship April 7th and I thought okay well whatever this was March 25th I thought that's not that's not too bad um okay so fast forward and I my package shipped on March 15th I mean, it's fine, but why say it's gonna ship on the 7th? Especially for a big company. I don't know, that kind of put me off. I was like, well, okay, here we go again. It wasn't as late as the last launch, but um, this one also, you know, was was coming late. And then when I received everything, the iCole was not in the package. And so I wrote them and I, I made sure that I had paid for it and I had. And so I wrote them and was like, hey, um, I noticed the eye cool wasn't in there. Can you, you know, refund me for it? Because at that point I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just kind of didn't care. Um, and they wrote me back and they're like, oh, that was a pre-order. And I was like, well, but it was part of this. And why didn't it say pre-order? I mean, it said we'll ship April 7th. And then this shipped, like, the day that they emailed me. So, I was just a little put off by that. Like, I felt a little bit like they were treating me like I was dumb, I guess. I don't know. I just, it's not a huge deal. It wasn't, I just was very put off by it. I just felt so kind of like, ugh, by this whole thing. I mean, I haven't, I've had this for almost two weeks and haven't felt like filming with it. <laughs> Which is sad because this was expensive. Um, all of that said, some of these things look very pretty, um, particularly the eyeshadow palette. So let me show you the products. This is the eyeshadow palette, outer packaging, it's a Bridgerton theme, it has the shades on the back. Um, whoa, okay. This is the palette. I have already stuck my fingers in there, yes. So when I first saw it, I thought it really looked like the other palette and I'm not gonna compare that. Um, I feel like there's a lot of videos on that, so um, I'm not going to, but when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's the same palette. And then I noticed the gold and there wasn't a gold shade. And then of course I was like, oh, that blue is so pretty and it's a little different and this shade is actually stunning. In fact, let's just swatch them right now. So that's the palette swatched out. It's funny because I was a little bit confused by the first one with the color story um, and Bridgerton. Like this is another thing that sort of confuses me about this whole situation is like, Pat McGrath, in general, I just feel like has this very dramatic vibe, but in a, like, in a high contrast kind of way. Like, very dark and very shiny. Um, yeah, I, and so, with Bridgerton, I felt like especially the first, and here's, Here's a difference too between the first and second season, I guess. The first season was very like pastels and just like pastels. It was pastels and light colors and they weren't very dramatic or I mean, I guess the Featherington family had, you know, a little bit brighter colors, but it was all kind of in the lighter spectrum, lighter, brighter. And I didn't feel like there was a lot of contrast. Now the second season with the Sharmas, having the, they had brighter colored, and I'm wondering if it had to do with, you know, they had grown up in India, and in India, the, you know, brightly colored saris and things are, are, um, 
like they're known for that, right? It's like color. Um, and so I think, you know, they did sort of get some brighter colors in the second season with the Sharmas coming on the scene. And then also, um, uh, there was like the Lady Featherington talking about loving gold and wanting everything to be gold. And so there's that, that element with that gold, but I still just feel like the show is so much lighter and brighter and it just seems like a strange mashup for me for Pat McGrath and Bridgerton. I have a lot of opinions right now, which I don't like to have because I don't actually, I don't want to, I don't want to die on this hill. I don't, you know, I don't actually care that much. It's just, I'm thinking about it because I paid a lot of money for it maybe. And I was a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, the shades, um, are, they're pretty. They're pretty. I, I do like the, um, the daring dandy here. Um, and like I said, that one is very different. It's so dramatic. I don't know. I don't know that that screams Bridgerton. Maybe without that shade a little bit more. But like, even with the Sharmas, I feel like it was more like deep teal and purple. And it was really only Kate that had the, the deeper colors in the second season. Anyways, I'm... I'm talking more about the show than the makeup and this is really about the makeup but anyways so that was that was my thoughts on on this I'm just I'm just not sure there are some pretty things about it I just I don't know I kind of don't see the point in a way sort of I'm not I'm not trying to be negative <laughs> I don't know I don't know okay so I want to do an eye look and I think I am just gonna go for kind of the dramatic again well we'll see what happens but let's let's just do a quick eye look with this and see what I can come up with um, I'm gonna get a fluffy brush and I'm gonna go into the shade kind of lightly it's Regency Romance and okay I'm getting quite a bit of kick up it could be my brush I guess um, this is a Nikia Joy Cosmetics Precision Blend. Let's do this way. So, um, I'm just gonna put through my crease. I do have eye primer on. So it's just, it's a reddish pink. It basically looks like it does in the pan. I had to go in again a little heavier because I went heavier on this side. Anyway, so I just built that up a little bit. So... Um, now I'm going to go into this shade, which I think is called Forbidden Amour. And you know what? I'm just going to use the same brush. I think it'll be fine. And we're just going to go into the outer corner and then out to my brow on the side. I realize I switched eyes on y'all. I do like that I can get a fair amount of depth from that. That's nice. I'm going to try to be objective about this, <laughs> even though I'm feeling a little bit, I'm feeling a little bit hurt. I have feelings. I have feelings. Um, just going to try to blend that out a bit with a clean, just a clean brush. From my memory, this does seem a little bit deeper and more maroon than than the other one, which seemed more red. And I do like the deeper, kind of more maroonness of it. So that's the thing. All right, now I want to go into um, a Daring Dandy on my finger. And I want to put that on the inner half and into my inner corner. Oh, making a mess, making a mess. It's fine. It's fine. This has a very creamy consistency, actually. All right. And taking Morphe 213, a little kind of flattish brush, I'm gonna go into this 
shade here it's called a refinement and I'm gonna highlight my brow bone I'm just gonna go in I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of this shade and just sort of lightly amp up this sort of um, middle area. All right, and then the last thing that I wanna do is take the gold Forever Charmed right here um, on my finger. And I'm actually gonna do that on the outer sort of half. Putting it kind of over that maroon color and then blending it into the, the um, Daring Dandy shade. Let's see how that works. The gold does have like sort of a black base. So I think it's going to give some depth out there. So I will say I'm not getting a lot of fallout with this, which is good. I can't really see much on my face. Okay, I'm just going to pop a little bit more of the Daring Dandy, the, the light blue shade, into my inner corner and really amplify that. I like that this has a little bit more pigmented base than the light blue in the other palette, the first palette. Yeah, I do, I do like that. All right, so I think, I guess let's go into the eye coal now. Legendary Wear Velvet Coal Eyeliner. I'm not sure why it's so thick like what the thought behind that was maybe it's for you know more drama which again I kind of don't get with this particular series there was more makeup the makeup was more intense um in in this one in in season two but um yeah I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna go all out here let's um well, first I'm gonna try to go just fill in into my lashes here because I tend to want that filled in. And I kind of tight line that too. Oh, and I should mention this particular launch um, the, the muse was, her name's Nicola Coughlin, um, the woman who played Penelope in Bridgerton. Um, and Penelope's character does tend to wear a little bit brighter colors. She's often put in yellow, so maybe the gold and the Lady Featherington liking the gold I'm talking about wanting everything gold had to do with why there's that gold shade <laughs> in the palette. Um, all right. Well, so because my eyes are teensy tiny, a little goes a long way with black. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I will say I think that filled in my lashes pretty well. I, this is so large. That I feel like for my tiny eyes, it's a little bit silly. Um, I'm going to take a little smudging brush and just kind of try to blend a little bit, smudge that out. Okay, I'm actually getting, whoa, major, major fallout. Oh no. Oh no, this is not. Look at that. Oh, that's not, that's not desirable at all. 
Um, well, that went wrong. I feel like I might have to just lean into that and I just don't want to. <laughs> I'm gonna go clean that up and I will be back. Okay, well, hopefully that worked, worked okay. Um, I don't, I didn't like that. It's weird, it's almost like it felt chalky or something, but it feels really smooth when I like draw with it. I don't know, maybe I just built it up too much. Um, anyway, I guess I'm going to go ahead, and this does kind of close up my eyes a little bit, but I think sometimes that's okay. I mean, it's a look to have like the full thing um, very lined, so. I'm gonna try to just get that in my lash line. Which this is big enough that that was very, the, it's not gonna look good <laughs> with, um, with my tiny eyes, but I guess it's not that bad, okay. Yeah, I just don't understand why this is so big. I don't get this. I just don't get it. Um, maybe it's for somebody who has some like real estate to work with. Wow, it got really dark. There's dark clouds outside. Yeah, I don't quite understand this. I don't know. I don't know why it's so big. Maybe it's just me though. Maybe it's because I have smaller eyes. I mean, it's creamy. It glides on nice. Um, but as you saw when I tried to smudge it out, it just fell down onto my lower lash line. And then also... Um, why wouldn't I just use the black, her black eyeliner, which I really like. So, not a fan. I'm gonna finish up my eyes. I'm gonna put on some lashes today. I think I'm actually gonna put on lashes. Um, we'll see, I might even get my lights out because this is getting really dark. Okay, be right back. Okay, lashes were a bust. Um, I opened up a new pack of lashes and one of them had been cut and used. It's just not okay. Um, going great. Going great. So, I mean, I don't hate this look, but I've been getting, like, black has just been, like, little dots of black, and they're hard to get off. So, this, I don't like. I don't like this at all. All right. Well, let's, all right, let's play with this. This is Again, the size of my face. Why is it so big? Yeah, this is a nightmare for makeup storage. Um, I mean, they're trying to make it look like, you know, that time period, whatnot, but I don't know. It's just, it's light and cardboardy. I don't know, I guess these are kind of pretty, hopefully. Those are what I'm gonna use today. Um, Oh, interesting. They feel more um, powdery than, or not powdery, they're like, um, they're very soft. Like they have a powdery feel to them, but they're not powdery in the sense that they um, kick up a lot. Um, anyways, okay, and then the little highlighter. Wow, these are super weird and different. Ooh, that is sparkly shiny. You see the glitter in that? Um, they're more pigmented. Swatch those. And actually, I'll try to put them in the order that they are in the thing. I sort of did it weird on my fingers, but um, these are... These are an interesting formula. Okay, very different from... Um, the highlighter showing up there okay um that's interesting okay well I think I'm going to try to go yeah I think I'm gonna go with this shade I think it'll be the most flattering and I'm gonna start light with that Ooh. okay so yeah it's kicking up a lot this packaging is ridiculous and there's got to be like so much empty space in there <laughs> Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. 
okay, that applied super nicely. It applied super nicely. That looks very pretty. I got a little bit more on that side. So I'm gonna take another blush brush actually and sort of just buff that out a little bit. These are intense, intense. Okay, it's pretty though. Um, and there is quite a sheen to it, but I, I kind of like it. Yeah, it looks very glowy and pretty. All right, well, let's go into that highlighter and Amp that up. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually very pretty, I think. I hate the packaging, but the products are nice. Um, I think, I'm guessing they would probably work for a lot of skin tones. Um, I'm pretty light, um, pretty standard light, and I have a yellow undertone, um, and the like, lightest one, the kind of orangey peachy with sort of a gold shimmeriness to it is, is fairly bright on me. So I bet this could go up um, to deeper skin tones. I don't know how deep, but I bet these would work. And Pat, Pat McGrath is usually pretty good about that too. Um, yeah, this is this is pretty. I like it better than the gold highlight from the last, the last collection. So packaging, one out of ten. I don't like it. And I mean, I guess it's kind of cute. We'll give it a two. We'll give it a two for cuteness, but that is huge. Hard to store, weirdly big, but the product, products inside are very beautiful, actually. I will admit that. I'm not too proud to admit that. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I forgot. So this, I actually already smelled it. Um, it has a strong perfume smell, but let's smell it again. I was going to return it, but I don't know that I'm going to bother. I think I'll just give this to someone. I just, I don't know. I just don't even want to bother with returning it. Maybe I will. I haven't actually like opened it or used it, but... It comes with a little puff. I mean, I guess it kind of smells like soap. Maybe it would be okay. I'm a little nervous about that. Oof, no. Too strong, too strong. That's gonna go to someone else. I'm not gonna try that on because that will make me feel a bit sick. Okay, so these are heavily scented, which I am not surprised by. Um, I was half expecting that. Um, yeah, it kinda smells like department store. Um, Cause I guess the perfume section, I don't know. Um, lipsticks, all right. So I picked up the shades, Venusian Peach Romantique 2 and um, Elson 5, and that is the bright red. I don't have her Elson shade in her other formula, so I wanted to try that. So I think the packaging on these is very cute. It's a little bit more chintzy, um, like it feels smaller and lighter and just kind of more cheap than the um, regular lipsticks. I do think this is cute. It looks like you'd be able to take it off and it would be like a ring or something, which would be super cute actually. Um, it's not that, but so this is the Elsin shade, super bright red, very creamy texture, kind of um, emollient. And um, this one is the Nude Romantique 2. Kind of a 
mauve, mauve shade, which I always like. These have quite a bit of pigment for being, you know, one of those like slicker, more emollient. I think that would be very pretty actually. And then this last one, some of the lipsticks were in a blue case, some were in a pink case. I don't know. I don't think that meant anything. I think it was just for funsies. And this shade is a little bit warmer, a little bit more peach, like a peach rose rather than They are pretty similar though. But yeah, I think that last one is gonna be my best bet for today. I'm gonna throw on a lip liner real quick and then I'll, I'll put the, the lipstick on. All right, so this is Nude Romantique 2. This feels a little bit like coconut oil, which I didn't notice before. Hmm, I don't love it, but it's pretty subtle. Okay, it looks really pretty and it feels pretty comfortable. It does feel a bit balmy, but why does it, does it have coconut oil in it? Well, I can't tell. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. There's something called coco oil something. There's something called cocoil hydrogenized oh, collagen and passiflora edulis seed oil. Maybe that's what I'm smelling. I don't know. I can't tell. I don't even smell it anymore, so that's good. Um, it's really pretty. I like I'm into it. Like this whole look actually. Um looks really pretty. Which I would expect nothing less. This brand, this brand does products well for the most part, especially the um, eyeshadows. Yeah, lip products, I like them. Cheek products, highlighters. I'm even wearing Pat McGrath mascara. Like I said, I bailed on the lashes because gross. I just, that grossed me out. <laughs> okay, final thoughts. I love the way this look turned out. I do. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Um, I like the eyeshadow palette of this one better than the one than than the past one. Um, the cheek palettes I like the same. I like the packaging of the other one better. Um, the incandescent gold highlighter from the last one was absolutely gorgeous and didn't have a scent. And this one I won't use because it has um, a perfumey scent. So. Eh, and I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess if you're into this kind of thing, I guess it's kind of cute. You know, it's very nostalgic, like old timey, whatever. Not for me. Um, this lipstick feels pretty nice. It feels like kind of a heavy chapstick in a way, or lip balm. Um, I grew up calling it chapstick, even if it wasn't chap lip balm. Um, yeah, it does definitely feel a little waxy, like I can feel it on my lips. Um, so it's it's slightly heavy, but not too bad. Very emollient, very pretty. Um, I can't speak to the wear time, but um, I'm guessing this is super transferable. Oh yeah, yeah, it's very transferable. So <laughs> keep that in mind, but pretty, very pretty. Um, well done with the products. They left me wanting with the customer service, but that's all right. And I don't like the eye coal, but the look is very pretty. All right. That is my very rambly um, thoughts with lots of feels thrown in. <laughs> like I said, love the look. Um, packaging very so-so um, for this one on all counts um and i didn't like the eye cool so 
I would say if you like, if you were thinking about the Bridgerton collection, I'm going to kind of group the both together because if it were me and I could just decide all over again what to get from the Bridgerton collections, I would get the eyeshadow palette from this one. So the second one, this one with the pink packaging. Definitely like this a lot better than, than the other one. Um, you know, I like the lipsticks. I'm guessing you probably only need one or two. Um, but yeah, very pretty. This, I don't like the packaging, but the product is nice. But if I had to choose one or the other, I would probably get the other blush, the other blushes. That was a really pretty, pretty palette. And that incandescent gold highlighter from the first, from the first launch was amazing like stunning it might be my favorite highlighter actually these are pretty but this packaging no <laughs> all right um again thank you so much for being here thanks for watching this video and listening to my very feely thoughts on everything um i don't know i it's hard i I like Pat McGrath's products, but I feel, you know, it just feels very corporate and very like, eh, we don't care. We're just in it to make money, which is kind of the case with a lot of things. But, you know, I've had such good experiences with these indie brands that really care about what they do and care whether or not they're doing right by their customers. So I don't know, or at least behave as though they do. Let me know if you picked up any of the Bridgerton first or second collection. Um, for the record, I liked season two of Bridgerton way better than the first one. The first one I kind of rage watched because I just, the characters made me mad. I, they just, they, they, in, they infuriated, infuri, infuriated me. <laughs> Whew. Um, and I just, I don't know, the second one was, the second season was so much more lighthearted and kind of funny. I thought they weren't taking themselves as seriously. It was just very funny. And there were some moments that I just loved and a lot of the female relationships I really enjoyed. So anyway, I digress. Thank you. I hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.